which NFL teams are making the playoffs and who's staying home. It's who's in, who's out on 97.3 ESPN-FM, South Jersey's football station. All right, who's in, who's out here in the NFL. These are the 12 teams we think will make the NFL playoffs after two weeks of resume. Let's start it off in the AFC East. I don't think there's any reason why anybody would turn a blind eye to the Patriots yet. No. Status Sorry, quo there. <laughs> All right. Can't even offer good commentary on that. Nothing oh, well, I, I decided to keep the Patriots because <laughs> yeah. they blew out the, my, uh, the I Marlins. I was up all night breaking this 37 one down. 37 <laughs> nothing. <laughs> all right. Defense any, has been really good this year. Any <laughs> surprise, any changes in the North? Yeah, I made a change. With the Roethlisberger injury and the Ravens' success, despite it being against two dumpster fires, I'm going to go with the Ravens. I, I think it's their division as we speak today with the AFC North. I'm I'm not, you know, out on Mason Rudolph. I think there's a chance that the Steelers can still be competitive, but based on what we've seen and the evidence we have in front of us, I think this now becomes the Ravens' division to lose. They are in for me at the AFC North. I had the Steelers the last two weeks. So I had the Browns last week. I'm keeping them. And I feel like I won't be motivated to change until probably next week because you have really two interesting games. You'll have the Browns playing the Rams at home. And then the only team that I would kick them out for would be, as Ryan said, the Ravens. And the Ravens have a game against Kansas City. So they have a ch- the Ravens have a chance. And I don't even know if they have to win, but they have a chance to prove to me that they're a real team and not just feasting mm-hmm. off the, the garbage of the NFL right now. And the same thing with the Browns. I mean, they beat the Jets. That's great. You still lost by 30 points at home in your opener. But you beat the Rams at home, and I have every reason to want to keep you there in uh, it, as the top of the AFC North. I've got Baltimore here. And last week, um, I think I had Baltimore. Yes, I had Baltimore last week. I had Pittsburgh in the preseason. Yep. I changed to Baltimore last week, and I'm sticking with Baltimore Again, this week, you know, a lot of that goes to, I think Jackson's played better than we thought. I think their offense is a more sustainable offense than what they've had in the past. Like, they have some big play weapons. They got the tight end. They can run the ball a little bit better now. But I also think their defense is pretty good. I mean, that's going back to when they played the Eagles in the inner squad uh, practices. A lot of the people were saying, look, that Ravens defense looked for real. Yeah. So I think their defense is pretty good. So I like the Baltimore Ravens as the North champion. All right, let's go to the South. Jeff Mosher, who do you like? Uh, I have been uh, consistently with the Texans all year long. Now, they'll have an interesting game. They did not look great against Jacksonville, but that's a division game. They won it, so I'm not going to do anything about it. They got to go fly to L.A. this weekend to play the Chargers. That's a formidable opponent. We'll see how they do. Um, I, you know, I, I'm still not sure. Even if they lose, I'd knock them down because right now it's – the next best team is probably Indianapolis, and they got to prove themselves as well. Yeah, I'm with you. I've had the Texans all along, and then they stay for me uh, as the the pick for the AFC uh, South. There, the Colts still have to prove it. I'm not sold on them. I think they're going to be competitive. I'm I'm giving Jacoby uh, Brissett some benefit there of the doubt, but they're not my pick to win the the division. Tennessee Titans don't think they have enough, and we all know what's going on in Jacksonville. So the Texans for me are still the pick in the South. I like uh, Houston as well. For three straight weeks, I stuck with Houston. I like them. And uh, right now, Watson is probably the uh, top quarterback in that division. In the West, has there been any changes for anybody in the West? Well, I'll start and say mine is. I had Chargers, Chargers. I'm going Chiefs. I mean, and I kicked myself for going Chargers because I've been a Chiefs guy pretty much the whole Andy Reid era here. And... I had them in the wild card before. I now have them winning the division. Uh, I'm going with Chiefs in the West. Yeah, I also have the Chiefs. I've had them from from the jump here, and I'm sticking with them. You look at the division. The Chargers can compete. I I don't think they have enough firepower to take down the Chiefs in the division when it's all said and done. And then you look at Oakland and Denver, and we all know the story with with those two franchises. So the Chiefs, to me, look like the, the easy pick. For the AFC West. Yeah, and I don't even know if Mike should have kicked himself for, for taking the Chargers because if we had started this a month ago, I probably would have taken the Chargers too. You had Kansas City working in an entirely new defense, right? And then you also had the Chargers coming off last year, but then all of a sudden they got hit with all these injuries as they always do. And then the Melvin Gordon holdout, Derwin James hurt. 
So uh, somebody else just got hurt for them too. Oh, Hunter Henry got hurt, and then uh, uh, Adrian Phillips got. I mean, th- th- this is what the Chargers do. They get hurt. They're like the Eagles of the West. <laughs> so I got the Chiefs, and uh, no reason. I- I've had the Chiefs consistently since week one, and I don't think that's probably going to change anytime soon. All right, a uh, couple of wild cards. Uh, my wild cards have changed every single week, and this time both of my wild cards are different. Wow. First, I had Kansas City and Cleveland. Then I had Kansas City and Pittsburgh. And this week, I've got the Chargers and Indianapolis. Wow, you put the Chargers in coming off a loss. Yes. I, well, I had to win in the division for a couple oh, of weeks right, so in a row. Bumped them down. I, I bumped see. them down to the wild card. I like that. But uh, I got Indianapolis. I, I was impressed with them going on the road and winning at Tennessee. They went on the road and played tough against the Chargers. I think Brissett will get better as the year goes on. The rest of that team around them, and I love Reich as the head coach out there. And I think the AFC as a whole is pretty weak. Real weak. Definitely. So... L.A. Chargers and Indy are my two last uh, wild cards. So, for me, I'm staying the same. I have the Chargers and the Browns. I've had them as the two wild card picks throughout the entire process. I have not been sold on the Ravens going into the year. Give them credit. Lamar Jackson looks great. Disclaimer, two of the worst defenses and teams in the league. I'm very curious to see how that pans out. But with the Steelers losing Big Ben, I bumped them from winning the AFC North completely out of it give the Ravens that for now and my wild cards stay the same with Chargers and Browns yeah my wild cards also stay the same but I I will admit that this has to be a prove it weekend for both of them because I've got the Chargers and the Steelers and the Chargers will play the Houston Texans if they lose that game that's two in a row against uh, you know a bad loss to the Lions and then losing to a Texans team and then the Steelers are obviously 0-2 if they lose to the 49ers 0-3 it's going to be tough because I don't have the Ravens right now because I have the Browns winning the North. So if the Ravens play formidably or even win against the Chiefs and the Chargers and Steelers both lose, I cannot in good conscience still continue to rock with these guys just because of my my opinion that you don't make changes, right? So uh, it'll be a prove-it weekend for the Chargers and the Steelers. All right, that's the AFC. Who's in? Who's out? We just told you who's in the AFC and the out teams. But who is in in the NFC? Let's go to the NFC East, boys. Uh, We'll start with you, Ryan. I got the birds, man. I got the Eagles, and yes, give the Cowboys some credit. They look real good. I'm still sticking with the Eagles. I think when it's all said and done, they're going to prove it to us. I'm not ready to move away from them yet. It's obviously a good two-team race with the Cowboys right there, looking looking good through two games as well. I'm sticking with the Eagles, though. Yeah, I am too. I mean, I'm of the opinion that if Alshon, Dallas, and Deshaun play, if if two, if one of those three play then they win that game, and they're 2-0 with an impressive road win over the Falcons, who I like. So I'm going to keep the Eagles there. Now, I, can, I, I don't know how much longer I can hold Dallas out of either that spot or a wild card spot, so it'll be a kind of a prove-it game for my wild card teams in the NFC. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the change. I like Dallas and what I've seen, and I like this for them. Miami at the Saints with no Drew Brees, at the Jets, at the Giants coming up for them. I think they're going to be able to build up a little bit. And the Eagles have some injury problems. They have two games in 10 days. So the Eagles might be playing catch-up by the time they face each other on December 22nd. But for right now, they're ahead, and I think they're going to be able to hold on to that, at least for the next couple of weeks with that schedule coming up. Miami next week. You get the Saints, which is a tough one on the road, but you play them without Breeze. That's a big advantage for them. Uh, They do get Green Bay, but that game's at home. Then at the Jets. Not a tough road game before they play Philly for the first time. So I think Dallas, by the time they get to Philly, is going to be ahead of Philly in the standings. Philly's going to be playing catch-up. Go to the north, and this one's interesting. Uh, Green Bay's played well. Minnesota uh, beat the Bears. The Bears won on the road, but it wasn't impressive. And uh, I don't know. I think uh, we've all had different picks here in the north. Jeff Mosher, who do you got? Yeah, I've had con- consistently since the start Minnesota Vikings. They're coming off a, a win, so that's good. for. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. They, they had a loss, and Kirk Cousins did not play particularly well. So uh, I guess it's kind of prove-it time for them because if the Packers go to 3-0, and I'm going to have to consider making a change. But for now, I'm, I still love their defense. I still think they have the best defense in that. De- well, the second best of the Bears, but I think they're a better overall, more well-rounded team than the Bears because of their offense. So... Uh, we'll see how it goes, but I'm I'm keeping the Vikings right now, but they're on alert. Yeah, so I, I had the Packers since day one. I'm sticking with them 2-0. They're in first in the division right now. The Bears, 
I think they're on track right now to look really brutal throughout the you know first half of the season. They could be right around 500 if they keep playing how they've been playing. I'm not sold on the Vikings either. Packers look good through two. I'm sticking with them. Uh, and I've had the Bears all three weeks. I'm sticking with them as well. Wow. They won on the road at Denver. Not easy to do. That's I don't true. care if it's ugly or not. To go to Denver and figure out a way to win, they play the Redskins coming up, then they go back and play uh, a division game with the Vikings. They get the Raiders, the Saints, no breeze. Their schedule is a little difficult, but winning on the road with that defense, I think their offense will kind of catch up to them there. Uh, and I like the Bears to win uh, in the North. The, the Bears. Bears have scored 19 points yeah. in two weeks. Woo. The 49ers, who are not like you know blessed with great weaponry, <laughs> have scored 72 points. Wow. It's pretty Niners amazing. have been interesting. It'll be interesting to see if, they, if uh, they sold anybody in this edition of who's in, who's out. Let's go to the South, where do we have any changes in the South? We had a big injury in the South. So I'll start with uh, Atlanta. I like Atlanta, what I saw from them the other night. Um, and the injuries. I think the injuries have changed it for me. Uh, Newton doesn't seem himself. Breeze being out. I don't think Tampa, although they beat Carolina, you know, Tampa could be the one that no one's talking about. Ends up getting Arians, figuring it out, and boom. But I'll go with Atlanta, and it's because I like what I saw from their defense. Uh, they got ran all over the first week, but, you know, they did a good job of tightening that up, and they got so many weapons down there. So Atlanta kind of uh, – I've never been a big believer in Atlanta, but this division seems a little wonky. Yeah, that was a good win for Tampa to go on the road Thursday night and beat Carolina. But And they'll have the Giants at home this weekend, so maybe if they blow them out, you start to give them a little more respect. But right now, to me, that division is the Atlanta Falcons and the Saints, and clearly with the Saints on a backup quarterback – I've had the I've had the Falcons winning the division since the start. They come off a I don't want to say an impressive win. They beat the Eagles. You know they won. They did what they were supposed to do and won. They're one and one now. So yeah, could be I'll a momentum game for them. Yeah, right? certainly. I mean, and they got a big game coming up against the Colts this weekend to really see you know kind of yeah. see if they don't let down. They were celebrating in the locker room. We, oh my we God. saw like they were Super Bowl champs, but it could be a game there, a win at home on national TV that gives them some momentum uh, the rest of the way here for at least the next few weeks. I had the Saints as the NFC South champions. Obviously, with that injury, I'm going to have to change things a little bit. And I like the Falcons right now. I think uh, they have... Jumping on my bandwagon. I'm eh? jumping on the, the most bandwagon here. I like the Falcons to take uh, take the South at the moment with everything else going on in the division. All right. Uh, in the West, uh, I've had the Rams since the start. They're 2-0. and They went on the road. Uh, they beat the Saints, albeit without Breeze. But they've shown me enough to feel like the Rams are legit. They're not going to, uh, you know, take a step back this year. I like the Rams to win the West. I also like the Rams, although you look at this division, and it's through two weeks, two weeks, but one of the more competitive. You have the Niners at 2-0, and the Seahawks at 2-0. and Kyler Murray played well, although they're not going to do much, but give him some credit down there in Arizona. For me, it's got to be the Rams. It's their division to lose. I see them pulling away with it, although Seattle could give them a little bit of a, of a fight. I still have the Rams winning it when it's all said and done. Well, you said it. I have Seattle. I've had Seattle since the start. They're 2-0. and I thought it was impressive, even with the injury to Roethlisberger, to go into – you go yeah. into Pittsburgh and win and score 28 points. You've done yourself a good job. So they have a pretty interesting game this weekend against the Saints, you know, uh, at home. Obviously, the Saints won't have Drew Brees. So uh, a really good chance to go to 3-0, and and I, I, I still like them to win that division. All right, uh, wild card time. Here we go. These are the last two playoff teams. Ryan, I'll start with you. Who uh, are the two? Wild now, my wild card teams have been the same both weeks. This week, they are both different. My wild cards have also been the same. But like I mentioned, when we were on the NFC South, I've had the Saints all along. I bumped them completely out of playoff contention for this week, similar to what I did with the Steelers. I moved the Falcons up there in the NFC South. And then also, I moved the Cowboys into a wild card spot. So I have the Cowboys and the Vikings, and Seattle's on the bubble for me. After this week, that could change as well. But for now, I'm going Cowboys and Vikings. I had Falcons and Vikings the last uh, previous who's in, who's out. So Falcons get the division. Cowboys slide into that open wild card for me. Yeah, uh, listen, I've got the Saints and Packers. I've had them from the start, but I can only do this for so long without holding, you know, holding off on the Rams, the Cowboys, and maybe even the 49ers. So 
Uh, we look at the Saints, and we're going to have to see how they are with Bridgewater. They got an interesting game against Seattle. And I, I guess the Vikings have to be on alert as my NFC North champion because if, if Green Bay goes to 3-0, and I would probably have to replace them right now as the NFC North champs, kick the Vikings even out of a playoff spot, and then go with maybe an undefeated Dallas or an undefeated Rams team if that's what the case is going to be. That's why I say next week is probably the most – the, the first opportunity for me to make a real change. The NFC is is very interesting because, I mean, in those wild card spots, you got uh, Dallas and Philly, two there. Green Bay, look, Detroit hasn't lost yet. Minnesota and Chicago, all four teams in the North are in play. The South is kind of all in play, too, with Tampa, Atlanta, and the Saints all one and one. And then you got the Rams and the 49ers haven't lost. And neither is Seattle, by the way. Somehow I bumped Seattle out of this thing, and I've had them <laughs> in the whole time. And they <laughs> went on the road. Oh. You bumped them yeah. on a road win, and you bumped them out? Um, wow. you, you know why? You NFC's know, deep, man. The, the NFC is very deep. And you know what? That uh, The uh, no. Green Bay is going to be interesting. Yeah. I think Green Bay being 2-0, and they've won two games in the division. You win two games in the division to start things off. It's going to be hard for them. They're going to have to be really bad to, the, to mm-hmm. not make the playoffs with two division wins. So, And then, look, San Francisco's 2-0, and and so is Seattle. Somebody who's 2-0 and out of that three is probably not going to make it. That's amazing. If you think about it like yeah. that. Yeah, it's going to be a battle all, all the way to the end in the NFC. And then you got Buffalo at 2-0, and who nobody put in, right? right. No. no. And they got to prove before yeah. they do that. You've got... Cleveland at one and one, Tennessee at one and one that nobody put in. Oakland's one and one, nobody put them in either. So the NFC definitely a deeper bunch. In fact, you know, in the AFC, anybody see any reason that it's not New England and Kansas City other than injury? No. Like no. is anybody close to those two? I don't think mm. anyone's even close. You know, you look I, I, I'll, I'll say wait, if the Chargers can Baltimore. get if the Chargers get Derwin James and Melvin, if they can hang on and, and, and still be competitive and get Gordon back by November and Derwin James, maybe, maybe. But after that, I, I don't know. No, I, I don't think there's anyone else. No. It's two teams. Like Josh the, the Texans. Team the Texans, right. probably. The Texans, right? The Texans, but I don't love them. I don't I like love them, them either. I don't love them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The Chargers, if the Chargers get their act together, maybe? Maybe. I would say maybe the Chargers. Maybe. Maybe the Texans, but they don't have enough firepower when it's all said and done. Yeah, I agree. That's, uh, that's out there. 